Hello, my name is MapMax. This video is going to be the first video in a series of videos where I will give step-by-step -step building instructions for the Mendel 90s 3D printer, which in my opinion is the best home-built 3D printer you can get at the moment. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can actually get your own customized Mendel 90 printer with your own custom sheet material, and so on and so forth. One of the great things about the Mandel 90 is that it's fully customizable. So if you're actually going to buy a complete kit, you do not need to concern yourself with this video. But if you're going to, you know, buy and source all the parts yourself, print your own 3D parts and so on and so forth, then you're going to have to watch this video to actually understand what you need to do. So before we can actually get started configuring our Mandel 90, we need a couple prerequisites. And those prerequisites are mostly the three programs, Python 2.7, Inkscape, and OpenASCAT. Not only do we need to install those three programs, we also need to set the environmental variables so that we can call all those three programs from the console, because otherwise the build script for the Mandel 90 won't work. So let's do that right now. First off, we install Python 2.7. Python is a programming language, and just like Java, it requires an interpreter to be installed. So just Google for Python 2.7. Here you go. Make sure you get the 2.7 version, not the 3.3 version. Those are not really compatible with each other. And down here, you have the download. So if you use Windows, you can use this or this. Uh, this is for Linux. This is for Mac. So download and install Python. Next, we need Inkscape. Again, if you just Google for Inkscape, you're going to get this. Inkscape is an open source vector graphics editor. You can download it right here. Again, Linux, Windows, Mac. And finally, you need OpenASCAD. Again, just Google for OpenASCAD. If you are into 3D printing, you probably already have this. This is a CAD editor. On the website, you just click Downloads, and again, you have Mac, Windows, and Linux. So, pause the video right now, install those three programs. Again, that's Python 2.7, Inkscape, and Open as SCAT. Pause the video right now, install all of those programs, and then resume. After you install those three programs, you cannot use them correctly right away from the console. So what you need to do is to edit the environmental variables of your machine. I'm going to show you how to do this with Windows 7, although it's very similar with Windows XP, Wister, and 8 as well. Go to your system control panel. This is in German, but you know, it looks basically the same in English. So you go to your systems control panel. You click on system system right here <laughs> and then you use this fourth option which is advanced system uh, properties click on here yeah we want to display it and in here you go to advanced okay so again you go to your system control panel you click on system you click on advanced properties and in here you click on advanced the last option down here is environmental variable. So click on that. This is a window we want, all right? So navigate to this window right now, pause the video and unpause when you see this window. Once we're here, what we need to locate is something called path in the lower portion of this window. Just ignore this, we need the lower portion of this window and we need to find something called path. Basically what that does is that when I open a command line window like this one and I type in something like Python, what this does is it searches all those paths specified in this variable for an exe file called Python. So because we want to use Python, Inkscape and OpenASCAD from the command line, we need to put the path in here. So select this and click on modify or edit. I don't really know what's in English. And then you go to the end of this right here, right? It's really long. Well, depending on the system, it can be really short or really long. For me, it's pretty long, but you really need to go 
to the end. You can do this really easily by just clicking the end key on your keyboard. So you go to the end and then you open your extra. Open your explorer and now we are going to search for our Python folder. In my case, it's in C program x86 because it's a 32 bit program. And in here we have the Python folder. So we locate this Python folder and then you can right click right here, copy address as text. And then you add a semicolon and you just insert that. Okay, so again, <laughs> you open the path variable, then you open your explorer and you find your Python folder. You right click right here, copy address as text. That only works with uh, 7 and 8, but with XP you can just copy it directly. So copy address as text and then semicolon and insert. All right, pause the video right now, do just that and then resume. Okay, cool, so we just added Python. Now we basically do the same thing with Inkscape and OpenMathScat. So next thing we do is we search for Inkscape. It's right here, again, copy it. Again, we add a semicolon. It's really important that we have the semicolon. You actually don't need to do a space, but only the semicolon. Then another semicolon. And this time we search for OpenSCAD. Again, copy address as text. Again, insert. All right, so in the end, what you should have is you should have Semicolon path to Python, semicolon path to Inkscape, semicolon path to Open ASCAD. When you have all of that, you click OK. Pause the video right now, make sure all those folders are in there, and then resume. OK, cool. So now that all your folders are in there, we you open your command line. And you do that by pressing Windows key plus R. When you press Windows key plus R, you get this. And you just type in cmd enter that's a command line you've probably never seen this but it's important and now what we're going to do is we're going to test whether or not the environmental variables actually work we do that by just typing in python and if the environmental variable is set correctly you will get something like that it can look a little bit different but the important thing is that python starts okay all right so let's quit it again by typing exit open bracket, close bracket, and now we try Inkscape. This would just open the program. All right, it opened with program, and finally we use, we type in open ASCAD. Cool, that worked too. All right, so if all those three things worked, then your environmental variables are set correctly. If they don't work, what you should try first is close the command line and open a new one. If it still doesn't work, you can restart your system. If it then still doesn't work, your environmental variables are probably not set correctly. But what's really important is that it needs to work in order for us to actually go ahead and get our own custom Mandel 90. So you have to find the error and you have to make those three commands work from command line. So pause the video right now, make sure those three commands work and then resume. Now that we made sure that all those programs are installed and working properly, we can now actually go ahead and make our own custom Metal 90. To do that, we go to github.com slash nophead slash 90. This is where you actually get the files for your 3D printer. If you just go ahead and search for Metal 90, it will be amongst the results right here. For me, it's a cert, but you know, Google gives you different results based on the user, but it will be amongst the results. So you open it, you click on zip, and then you can actually download it and save it. So download this file, Mental 90 Master Zip, save it, extract it, go into the folder you extracted it, pause the video, and resume when you did that.
All right, so when you just downloaded it and extracted it, you should find something like this. This is the main Mandel 90 folder. It might look a little bit different for you. In here, we go into the ASCAT folder, and then we go into the conf folder. This is where the magic actually happens. This is where you can go ahead and make your own machine. So let's actually do this. Find the Mandel underscore config.ascat, and then we will just going to make a copy of that. And we are going to name it my Mandel underscore config.ascat. The important part is whatever you put in here, that doesn't matter, right? But it has to end with underscore config.ascat. It has to end with underscore config.ascat. That's important. All right. So you save this. And then you're going to edit with a text editor. And this is where the magic actually happens. This is where you can configure your Mandel 90 in any way, shape, or form that you want. So, for example, if you want to use other bearings than the LM8 you use, which are standard linear bearings for 8mm, like let's say you want to use 10mm bearings, you just change this to 10. So, right, yet now you're asking, yeah, but how do I know what I can put? Intro here. Well, it's a good question. You have to go to your Mandel 90 Master ASCAT folder, and in there you will find a folder called Vitamins. And in here are all the vitamins, all the non printer parts that are needed for the printer and that you can actually use in this config file. So, in case of bearings, you just go to ball bearings and let's have a look at this. Oh, those are actually normal bearings. I'm searching for linear bearings. Oh, linear bearings, here they are. So here you see the linear bearings that are actually uh, possible with this printer. LM4, LM6, LM8, LM10 UU. But you can add your own linear bearings if you want. You can just copy one of those lines right here. And then you have to change this. This are actually the... I guess it's uh, length. Outer diameter and inner diameter. Yeah, that must be it. Length, outer diameter, inner diameter. So you can just change all of those. And then you have a new bearing added. So let's say 12. Uh, has an inner diameter of 12 millimeter. Has an outer diameter of... I don't know. Uh, has an outer diameter of maybe uh, 20. <laughs> I, I don't actually know. But you know, this is the way you can just add your own parts if you want. So back to the config, for most machines, 8mm linear bearings are alright. Like some people might use 10mm linear bearings and the reasoning behind this is that you use 10mm smooth rods for that and 10mm smooth rods are more sturdy. So if you want to transport your printer, you probably want to use 8mm, right? Not uh, 10mm, not 8 But you know, you probably don't really need 12 or more. Motors. You can change motors. Again, the motors are actually defined in here. So the motors in here are NEMA 17, NEMA 17S and NEMA 14. Again, you see right here all the properties of the motor. Length, radius and so on and so forth. So in theory, you can just add a new motor like I did right here if you use a different motor from those two, but the NEMA 17 is the one that is usually used for RepRap 3D printers. But again, you can define your own motor and use that and the 3D models will be constructed so that it fits. Hot end, again, it's defined in the file. X, Y, Z travel, that's the amount your X, Y, and Z axis can travel. So if you want to build a bigger tra uh, printer, you can just change this to 400 times 400 times 400 millimeters, right? You can do that. Bed depth and bed width, those are the sizes of your print bed. Again, in millimeters. Uh, this is what separates your print bed from your heated bed or your white carriage from your print bed. Uh, you can basically leave this alone. It doesn't really matter. Bed thickness, you can leave this alone too. You can leave this alone too. Now come uh, the really important part, base and frame. Now this is the material that's actually used for the base and the frame. Uh, in this case I'm using MDF 12mm, but again let's have a look. 
in the vitamins folder we have sheet.scat and in here are all the sheets we can use MDF6, 10, 12, MDF19, I actually added this myself uh, PMMA which is acrylic and so on and so forth those are all the sheets that are used again you can add your own one by simply copying a line Oops, that's not what I wanted to do and adding it right and then changing the options you can do that but what you enter in the config file has to be in here so let's say you want to build your own printer and you want to build it out of MDF you probably want to put MDF 12 in here which is 12 millimeter thick MDF right this is the base of the 3d printer um, that is basically for rounded corners so it's completely irrelevant this is for the rest of the frame so you can use different materials for both of those frame nuts that's well basically when it's false you use wood screws when it's true you use nuts that you um, you put into the sheet material this is only really important for the bill of materials basically everything we we change in here like down here this stuff here affects the 3d models but this stuff down here affects basically only the drill guides and the bill of materials uh, then the fan that's the fan at the side of the printer uh, so if you want to use a 120 millimeter fan go ahead again you have to look into the vitamin folder to make sure the fan is actually defined otherwise you have to define it yourself uh, PSU power supply you can leave this alone if you use an ATX power supply just leave it like this um, that's because there are actually ATX brackets to mount the ATX power supply to the printer that's all that's for uh, same with the controller that's so that the drill guide has the right holes because the Melzi is actually a really long and thin controller whereas the Sanguino I have no idea how to pronounce that is more of it's more square than the Melzi spool the printer actually features a spool holder so that's important uh, this is whether or not you want the z-axis switch at the top or at the bottom actually it's probably for all switches uh, so here we can change whether or not you want the switches at the top or at the bottom i have no idea what this is uh, this is the material for the white carriage so again let's say mdf12 those are the belts you're using, T5s or T9s, you can uh, change that here. That's the diameter of the threaded rod for the Z-axis. So standard is 10 millimeter again, if you want to use a uh, standard is 80 millimeter again, if you want a more sturdy version, you can use 10 millimeters. You can leave all of this alone, you can leave all of this alone. And down here, you can change the default screws again. In your vitamins folder, you have screws.ascad. Those are all the screws you can use. Again, you can define your own screws if you want to. And here you can change the screws you want to use. So if you want to use a wood screw or whatever, you can put it in here. Like here, the soft screw is used for soft materials. For example, right here, MDF, it's defined as soft. So that would use a soft screw for example, right? And this would directly affect, oops, the bill of materials. That's basically what this is for. All right, so what you need to do now <laughs> is you need to customize your printer, change your config ASCAD file in any way, shape or form you want. Pause the video right now. And when your config file is done, save and resume the video. All right, so now you change the config file to your liking. Now we actually need to build the machine. That's why we are here. So you navigate back to your master folder and you're going to copy this address. And then you're going to get your CMD back. Again, that's Windows key plus R and you just type in CMD. Okay, so in here, first thing we have to do is we have to navigate to the right drive. So I'm on drive E, so E colon. And then I have to navigate to this folder and I do that by typing in CD space and then insert, enter. All right, so here we are. And now we type the magic command, Python make underscore machine, PY my mandal. That's your machine name, 
right? That's what you put in here. The first part without the underscore config. That's what you type in here. All right. So if you have named your Mandel in differently from that, you're going to have to put the name in. But this is named my Mandel, so I type in my Mandel enter. And now what the script is going to do is it's going to build all the 3D models again based on your config files. It's going to make all the all the PDF drill guides based on what screws you use, based on what materials you use, and so on and so forth. And in the end, you have all the files you need to actually start building your own Mandel 90. And this concludes the first video in this series. My name is B. Matt Max. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.